Hello my lovelies! It is time for another massive book haul, so stay tuned. So as you can see, I have a lot of books here. I just counted and there are 47 books that I acquired this month. Yeah, um, <laughs> I might have gone a little uh, overboard because this giant stack right here are all books that I've purchased uh, like from different sites online and whatnot. These are all books that uh, came in subscription boxes or um, were gifted to me or I won like a, as a giveaway or whatever. So yeah, I bought a lot. <laughs> uh, there are quite a few used ones in here, but there's also new ones as well. So let me move this camera a little bit closer and we can just jump right in. Okay, so I think I'm going to start over here with all of the uh, subscription boxes and giveaways and gifts and whatnot. So the first book I have here, I think the, the majority of these on top here are from uh, Unplugged Book Box. They're YA and they're adult and those are kind of just mixed together. So the first one I have here is The Stranger Behind You by Carol Goodman. And I think this is a thriller, I believe. It says, journalist Joan Laurie has written a seething article exposing a notorious newspaper tycoon as a sexual predator. But the night it goes live, she is brutally attacked. Traumatized and suffering the effects of a concussion, she moves into a highly secure apartment building in Manhattan called The Refuge which was at one time a Magdalene Laundry. Joan should be safe here, so how can she explain the cryptic incidents that are occurring? Lillian Day is Joan's new 96-year-old neighbor at the refuge. In 1941, Lillian witnessed a mysterious murder that sent her into hiding at the Magdalene Laundry, and she hasn't come out since. As she relates her harrowing story to Joan, Joan sees striking similarities to her own past. Melissa Osgood, newly widowed and revengeful, has burning questions about her husband's recent death. When she discovers a suspicious paper trail that he left behind, she realizes how little she knew about her marriage. But it seems Joan Laurie might be the one who has the answers. As these three lives intersect, each woman must stay one step ahead of those who are desperate to make sure the truth is never uncovered. Dun dun dun. <laughs> Okay, next up we have The Dragonfly, or Dragonfly Girl by Marty Limbach. And this one says, Kira Adams has discovered a cure for death and now her life is in danger. Things aren't going well for Kira. At home, she cares for her mother and fends off debt collectors. At school, she's awkward and shy. Plus, she may flunk out if she doesn't stop obsessing about science, her passion, and the one thing she's good at. Very good at. Desperate to bring in money, she enters a prestigious science contest with a big cash prize. At the awards, Kira draws the attention of celebrated professor Dr. Gregory Munn, as well as his handsome assistant eventually leading to a part-time job in a top-secret laboratory. The job is mostly cleaning floors and equipment, but one night while running her own experiment, she revives a lab rat that has died in her care. One minute the rat is dead, the next it is not. Suddenly, she's the remarkable wonder kid, the girl who can bring back the dead. Everything is going her way, but it turns out that science can be a dangerous business and Kira is swept up into a world of international rivalry with dark forces that threaten her life. Spooky. <laughs> okay, next we have The Jasmine Throne by Tasha Suri. And this is a thick book. It is 533 pages. But, uh... Very full pages. <laughs> this says, trapped by her despotic brother within the crumbling walls of an ancient temple, Princess Malini dreams of vengeance. Forced to disavow her birthright and her power because of her past, maidservant Priya dreams of freedom. 
In a world beset by wild magic and turbulent uprising, their destinies will become irrevocably tangled, and together they will set an empire ablaze. Then we have The Bone Maker by Sarah Beth Durst. And this says, 25 years ago, five heroes risked their lives to defeat the Bone Maker, Eklor, a corrupt magician who created an inhuman army using animal bones. But victory came at a tragic price. Only four of the heroes survived. Since then, Kriya, the group's leader, has exiled herself to a remote tower and devoted herself to one purpose resurrecting her dead husband. But such a task requires both a cache of human bones and a sacrifice. For each day he lives, she will live one less. Kraya would rather live one year with her husband than a hundred without him, but using human bones for magic is illegal in Voss. The dead are burned, as are any bone workers who violate the law. Yet Kriya knows where she can find the bones she needs, in the battlefield where her husband and countless others lost their lives. But defying the laws of the land exposes a terrible possibility. Maybe the dead don't rest in peace after all. Five warriors, one broken, one gone soft, one pursuing a simple life, one stuck in the past, and one who should be dead. Their story should have been finished, but evil doesn't stop just because someone said the end. Then we have Capture the Crown by Jennifer Estep. And this says, Jimmy Ripley has a reputation for being a pampered princess who is more interested in pretty gowns, sparkling jewelry, and other frivolous things than in learning how to rule the kingdom of and Andvari. But her carefully crafted persona is just an act to hide the fact that she is a powerful mind major and a spy. Gemma is undercover, trying to figure out who is stealing large amounts of Tearstone from one of the Ripley Royal Mines when she encounters Prince Leod Leonidas, Leonidas? Morcon of Morda, her mortal enemy. Gemma tries to steer clear of the handsome prince, but when she finds herself behind enemy lines, she reluctantly joins forces with Leonidas. Also coming to Gemma's aid is Grimly, her beloved gargoyle. Despite the fact that Andvari and Morda are old, bitter enemies, a dangerous attraction sparks between Gemma and Leonidas. Further complicating matters is the behind the infamous... Wait. <laughs> Further complicating matters is Leonidas' murderous family, especially Queen Maeven Morricon, the mastermind behind the infamous Seven Spire Massacre. The closer Gemma gets to Stolen Tearstone, the more deadly plots she uncovers. Everyone is trying to capture the crown, but only one queen can sit on the throne. And I just realized that I forgot to swap out my battery before I started filming this, and so now my battery is flashing. <laughs> so let me put a new battery in and I'll be right back. Okay, sorry if the angle changed. Next up we have Darling by Kay Akram. And this is probably the one out of all of the boxes that I am the most excited for because this is a Peter Pan retelling set in like our world and yes. This says, you've heard this story before, but this time it won't end the way you think. On Wendy Darling's first night in Chicago, a boy called Peter appears at her window. He's dizzying, captivating, beautiful. So she agrees to join him for a night on the town. Wendy thinks they're heading to a party, but instead they're, instead they're soon running in the city's underground. She makes friends, a punk girl named Tinkerbell, and the lost boys Peter watches over. And she makes enemies, the terrifying Detective Hook, and maybe Peter himself, as his sinister secrets start coming to light. Can Wendy find the courage to survive this night and make sure everyone else does too? And... Oh, it says, acclaimed author Kay Agram has re-envisioned Peter Pan with a central twist that will send all your previous memories of J.M. Barrie's classic permanently off to Neverland. And oh my gosh, I cannot wait to read this. Next up we have The Ones We're Meant to Find by Joan He. And this has really pretty end pages. This one says, 
It's been three years and 17 days since C woke up on the shore of an abandoned island. She has no idea how she came to be marooned or what her life was like before. She is only the rickety house by the sea, the android she built for company, and a single memory. Somewhere beyond the horizon, she has a sister, and it's up to sea to escape the island and find her. A world away, a 16-year-old STEM prodigy, Casey, is also looking to escape from the science she once believed in and from her home. The eco-cities, Earth's last unpopulated habitats, are meant to be a sanctuary for those from deserving lineages, for those committed to planetary protection. But instead, they're populated by people willing to do anything for refuge, even lie. After a series of man-made disasters rock the planet, Casey must decide if she's ready to use science to help humanity, even though it failed the people who mattered most to her. From Joan He, the critically acclaimed author of Descendant of the Crane, comes a stunning science fiction novel with mind-blowing twists. Okay, then we have The Rose Code by Kate Quinn. And this says... Oh, here we go. This says, 1940, as England prepares to fight the Nazis, three very different women answer the call to mysterious country estate Bletchley Park, where the best minds in Britain train to break German military codes. Vivacious debutante Osla has everything, beauty, wealth, and the dashing Prince Philip of Greece sending her roses. But she burns to prove herself as more than a society girl and puts her fluent German to use as a translator of decoded enemy secrets. Imperious self-made mob, a product of East End London poverty, works the legendary code-breaking machines as she conceals old wounds and looks for a socially advantageous husband. Both Asla and Mob are quick to see the potential in local village spinster, Beth, whose shyness conceals a brilliant facility with puzzles. And soon, Beth spreads her wings as one of the park's few female cryptanalysts. But war loss and the impossible pressure of secrecy will tear the three apart. 1947. As the royal wedding of Princess Elizabeth and Prince Philip whips post-war Britain into a fever, the three friends turned enemies are reunited by a mysterious encrypted letter, the key to which lies buried in the long-ago betrayal that destroyed their friendship and left one of them confined to an asylum. An enigmatic traitor has emerged from the shadows of their Bletchley Park past, and now Ozla, Mob, and Beth must resurrect their old alliance and crack one last code together. But each petal they remove from the Rose Code brings danger and their true enemy closer. All right, then we have Ace of Spades by Farida Abiki Ayamid. I'm sorry if I said that wrong. Uh, this is the other book that I'm most excited for in these uh, book box books. Is book box books. There we go. Because um, this one's like Gossip Girl meets something else. It's like more of a, a little more high stakes kind of Gossip Girl from what I gather. This says, All you need to know is I'm here to divide and conquer like all great tyrants do. Aces. When two nivious private academy students, Devin Richards and Chamaka Adebayo, are selected to be part of the elite school's senior perfects, it looks like their year is off to an amazing start. After all, not only does it look great on college applications, but it officially puts them in the running for valedictorian too. Shortly after the announcement is made though, someone goes by Someone who goes by Aces begins sending anonymous text messages to reveal secrets about the two of them that turn their lives upside down and threaten every aspect of their carefully planned futures. As Aces shows no sign of stopping, what seemed like a sick prank quickly turns into a dangerous game, with all the cards stacked against them. Can Devin and Chiamaka stop Aces before things become incredibly deadly? With heart-pounding suspense and relevant social commentary, it comes a high-octane thriller from debut author Farida Abiki Ayamide. I'm very, very excited to read this one. Okay, uh, these next, I don't know, three, four, something like that, were uh, in my Brave Girls Book Club box. 
So the first one we have here is Dr. Wangari Mathai Plants a Forest. And this says, Wangari lives in the lush green land of rural Kenya, where trees tower into the sky and streams are full of mysterious creatures. All day she plays beneath her favorite fig tree, and at night she gathers with her family to listen to their mother's stories. Then Wangari grows up and goes away to school, and things start changing at home. Farmers chop down trees, the streams and soil dry out, and nothing will grow. People go hungry. After all her studies, Dr. Wangari Mathai realizes there is a simple solution to these problems. Plant a forest full of trees. And uh, give me just one second because I have to go check on something and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Continuing on. Next we have Madam C.J. Walker builds a business. This says, Sarah is the first in her family to be born free in Delta, Louisiana. But being free doesn't mean that Sarah doesn't have to work. She cooks, she cleans, she picks cotton, she does laundry, and she babysits. And when she works, she wraps up her hair. One day, Sarah's hair starts to fall out. It's itchy, crunchy, patchy, and won't grow. Instead of giving up, Sarah searches for the right products. And then she invents something better than any shampoo or hair oil she's used before. Her hair grows and grows, so she decides to start her own business. And I'm not entirely sure, but it might be possible that these are actually true stories. Oh, yes, these are true stories. So that's very cool. Okay, next up we have Love Frankie by Jacqueline Wilson. And this says, she's my friend, but I think I want more. Frankie is nearly 14 and knows that teenage life isn't always easy. Things are hard at school, but home isn't much better. But a new friend, Sally, helps Frankie to feel stronger about her mom's MS and her dad's new girlfriend. As the girls grow closer, Frankie's feelings deepen and she realizes she, wants, realizes she wants to be more than friends with Sally. But when everyone at school finds out their secret, things begin to unravel. Does Sally love Frankie back or was she just playing games? All right, next up we have The Deep Blue Between by Aisha Haruna Ata. And I can't remember if this one was uh, the Brave Girls Book Club or if it was Books That Matter. They both come from the same company uh, except Brave Girls Book Club is more middle grade and Books That Matter is like YA and adult. So I'm not entirely sure which one this came in. I can't remember. Uh, but this says, Twin sisters Hasana and Husina are, born, are torn apart after a brutal raid on their village. This tragedy will set them on a voyage to unfamiliar cities and cultures where they will forge new families, ward off dangers, and begin to truly know themselves. As the twins pursue separate paths in Brazil and the Gold Coast of West Africa, they remain connected through their shared dreams, but will they ever manage to find each other again? And yeah, I do think that this is middle grade, but I'm, again, I'm not entirely certain. And then I think the rest of these subscription box books are all books that matter. So YA and adult. Uh, okay. It looks like my SD card is about to fill up. Ah, uh, okay. Sorry if there was an angle change. It actually cut me off in the middle of saying that my SD card was filling up. So we've got that sorted out. We've got a new battery in. Hopefully we should be good for a while, so let us continue on. So the next book I have here is Conjure Women by Afia Adakora. And this says, you're free to decide your future, but how do you escape the ghost of the past? A pale skinned, black eyed baby is a bad omen. Rue knows it, but for once, despite her skill as a midwife, she doesn't know what to do. Times have changed since her mother held the power to influence the life and death of her fellow slaves. Freedom has come, but this new world brings new dangers, and when sickness sweeps across her tight-knit community, Rue finds herself the focus of suspicion. What secrets does she keep amidst the charred remains of the big house? Which spells has she conjured to threaten their children? 
Now, why is she so wary of the charismatic preacher man who promises to save them all? Conjure Women is a captivating novel of belief and suspicion, friendship and betrayal, and the links we will go to save the ones we love. Okay, next up we have Voices of the Lost by Hoda Barakat. And this is actually a relatively thin one. It's only 197 pages. This says, Winner of the International Prize for Arabic Fiction, A Devastating Story of Displacement War and the Unlikely Glimmer of Hope in the Dark. In an unnamed country torn apart by war, six strangers are compelled to share their darkest secrets. Taking pen to paper, each attempts to put in writing what they can't bring themselves to say to the person they love. Mother, father, brother, lost love. Their words form a chain of dark confessions, none of which reaches the intended recipient. But their consequences will ripple through others' lives, affecting strangers in ways the writers could never have anticipated. A luminous and haunting novel from one of today's most talented Arabic writers, Voices of the Lost tells the moving story of characters living on the periphery battling displacement, poverty, and the demons within themselves. Okay, next up was a little bonus book that came in one of them. This was The Master's Tools Will Never Dis Dismantle the Master's... Okay, Zan oh, not Xander, Einstein. Okay, next up is this little bonus book that came in one of the boxes. This is The Master's Tools Will Never Dismantle the Master's House by Audrey Lord. And it is a very short little thing. It's only, it looks like 51 pages. And it says, from the self-described black lesbian mother warrior poet, these soaring urgent essays on the power of women, poetry and anger are filled with darkness and light. And I currently have two dogs trying to fight right here and they're going to knock over my tripod, so. Give me one second so I can move them. Ah. Give me a second. <sighs> okay, this video is just getting just absurd. <laughs> Continuing on, we have How Much of These Gold How Much of These Hills is Gold by C. Pam Zhang Shang. And this says in the American West during the gold rush, Lucy and Sam leave town with a gun in their hands and the body of their father on their backs. The siblings seek out a new way to live, but will their secrets bring them together or break them apart? And I can't remember if this was actually with the Books That Matter box or the Brave Girls Book Club. I can't remember, but it is such a pretty book. Okay, next up we have... She Will Soar, Bright Brave Poems of Freedom by Women by Anna Sampson. Or, yeah, Anna Sampson. This says, She Will Soar is an uplifting collection of bright brave poems about freedom written by women from the ancient world right up to the present day. It includes poems on wanderlust, travel, daydreams, flights of fancy, escaping into books, tranquility, courage, hope, and resilience. From frustrated housewives to passionate activists, from servants and suffragists, to some of today's most gifted writers. Here is a bold choir of voices demanding independence and celebrating their hard-won power. Immerse yourself in poems by Carol Ann Duffy, Christina Rossetti, Stevie Smith, Sarah Croson, or Crossan, Emily Dickinson, Selena Godden, Mary Jean Chan, Charlie Cox, Nikita Gill, Fiona Benson, Holly McNish, and Grace Nichols, to name but a few. Okay, so those are all of the books that came in subscription boxes. Uh, the next book I have here is actually one that was sent to me by the author. Uh, I believe this is a self-published book and uh, it just it sounded really interesting to me so I really wanted to read it. And that is Strange Gods by Allison Kimball. And this says, Spooky arrives at a wilderness boot camp for troubled teens with two suitcases and an ultimatum. Either she keeps her head down over the summer or she won't be allowed home at the end of it. All she wants to do is survive the pyros, bullies, and power tripping counselors, get through senior year, and start her life somewhere new. She'll do just about anything to protect that future. But when an encounter with another camper goes awry and ends with Spooky hiding, hiding in the woods, something else finds her. 
something ancient and powerful has sent out feelers, hoping to catch a human alone. For its purposes, one human is as good as any other. Even a delinquent teen will do. If Spooky wants to survive to see any kind of future, she will have to figure out how to gain leverage over a god. And as if the one wasn't bad enough, a pantheon of dark entities are lining up between her and the life she's always wanted. And I think this just sounds super interesting. Okay, next up is a book that was gifted to me. And that is uh, Between the Lines by Jody Peacol and Samantha Van Leer. And oh my goodness, this is a very cute bookish book and I cannot wait to read this. This was kindly gifted to me by my friend Don Dawson who on Instagram is at concertjunkie973. So this says, what happens when happily ever after isn't? Delilah hates school as much as she loves books. In fact, there's one book in particular she can't get enough of. If anyone knew how many times she has read and reread the sweet little fairy tale she found in the library, especially the popular kids, she'd be sent to social Siberia. Forever. To Delilah, though, this fairy tale is more than just words on the page. Sure, there's a handsome, well, okay, hot, prince, and a castle, and an evil villain, but it feels as if there's something deeper going on. And one day, Delilah finds out there is. Turns out this Prince Charming is real, and a certain 15-year-old loner has caught his eye. But they're from two different worlds, and how can it ever possibly work? Together with her daughter, Samantha Van Leer, number one New York Times bestselling author Jody Peacock has written a classic fairy tale with a uniquely modern twist. Readers will be swept away by the story of a girl who crosses the border between reality and fantasy in a perilous search for her own happy ending. And I think this sounds so freaking cute. And oh my goodness, Don, thank you so much for sending this to me. Okay, I'm going to have to make another stack because this stack is about ready to fall over. Okay, and then the next book, or the last book in this stack over here is one that Amy from A Star Reads, and I'll link her down below. She had a little giveaway, and I just happened to be one of the winners. And for her giveaway, she asked us for like our Amazon wish list link or whatever link, and um, if there was any particular book we wanted or any on our list. And I just said, any on my list is fine. And so she picked out for me Rule of Wolves by Lee Bardugo and this is the second book in the King of Scars duology. I do believe it is a duology. So this is the end of this one. Uh, hold on, let me pull up King of Scars on my phone on Goodreads so I can tell you about it. Oh, also, hold on. So pretty in pages, but look at this stunning, stunning book without the jacket gorgeous. Okay, so for King of Scars, this is another book series sort of in the Grishaverse world and it follows Nikolai Lansov, um, who is one of the main or one of the characters in like the Shadow and Bone series. Anyway, this is what it says for King of Scars. Face your demons or feed them. The dashing young king, Nikolai Lansov, has always had a gift for the impossible. No one knows what he endured in his country's bloody civil war, and he intends to keep it that way. Now as enemies gather at his weakened borders, Nikolai must find a way to refill Ravka's coffers, forge new alliances, and stop a rising threat to the once great Grisha army. Yet with every day, a dark magic within him grows stronger, threatening to destroy all he has built. With the help of a young monk and a legendary Grisha general, Nikolai will journey to the places in Ravka where the deepest magic survives to vanquish the terrible legacy inside him. He will risk everything to save his country and himself, but some secrets aren't meant to stay buried and some wounds aren't meant to heal. I love Nikolai, so I'm really excited to have that whole series now. I think I actually have all of the books, maybe? No, I'm missing The Lives of Saints and The Severed Moon. So I'll have to get those at some point. 
Okay, now on to this massive stack of books that I have purchased myself. Or, I mean, I purchased all of the uh, subscription boxes, but purchased separately from different sites. Okay, the first one we have here is one of my new books. That is The Maidens by Alex Michaelides. And all I know about this book is that it's like dark academia. It's also written by the same person that wrote The Silent Patient, and I absolutely loved The Silent Patient, so I'm like really excited to read this. Though I have, I have unfortunately heard very mixed reviews. Uh, I, I think a lot of people have not actually liked it, but I'm, I'm hoping that I still do. This says, a spellbinding tale of psychological suspense weaving together Greek mythology, murder, and obsession. Edward Fosca is a murderer. Is a murderer. <laughs> of this, Mariana is certain, but Fosca is untouchable. A handsome and charismatic Greek tragedy professor at Cambridge University, Fosca is adored by staff and students alike, particularly by the members of a secret society of female students known as the Maidens. Mariana Andros is a brilliant but troubled group therapist who becomes fixated on the Maidens when one member, a friend of Mariana's niece, Zoe, is found murdered in Cambridge. Mariana, who was once herself a student at the university, quickly suspects that behind the idyllic beauty of the spires and torrents and beneath the ancient traditions lies something sinister, and she becomes convinced that despite his alibi, Edward Fosca is guilty of the murder. But why would the professor target one of his students? And why does he keep returning to the rites of Persephone, the maiden, and her journey to the underworld? When another body is found, Mariana's obsession with proving Fosca's guilt spirals out of control, threatening to destroy her credibility as well as her closest relationships. But Mariana is determined to stop this killer, even if it costs her everything, including her own life. I'm excited to read it, though. All right, uh, these next one, two, three, four, five books are actually all part of a series. So hold on. I already own the first two books in this series. So I have now, uh, I think I got them all from thrift books. I have books three, four, five, six, and seven. We have The Iron Queen by Julia Kagawa. The Iron Knight, The Lost Prince, The Iron Traitor, which is also very foily, and The Iron Warrior. And these are part of the Iron Fae series, the Iron Queen here. Uh, I think the first book is The Iron Daughter. No, the first book is The Iron King. The second book is The Iron Daughter. And I have read this and really, really enjoyed it. So I wanted to get the rest of the series. Uh, so let me read about The Iron King, which is book one in the Iron Fae series. Megan Chase has a secret destiny, one she could never have imagined. Something has always felt slightly off in Megan's life, ever since her father disappeared before her eyes when she was six. She has never quite fit in at school or at home. When a dark stranger begins watching her from afar and her prankster best friend becomes strangely protective of her, Megan senses that everything she's known is about to change. But she could never have guessed the truth, that she is the daughter of a mythical fairy king and is a pawn in a deadly war. Now Megan will learn just how far she'll go to save someone she cares about, to stop a mysterious evil no fake creature dare face, and to find love with a young prince who might rather see her dead than let her touch his icy heart. And then the next, let's see. Okay, this next book here is Shadow Falls, The Beginning by C.C. Hunter. And this actually has the first two books in the Shadow Falls series. We have Born at Midnight and Awake at Dawn. So it's two books in one. I wonder if the pages, yeah, the pages start over. So it is separated like that. Uh, this says, uh, now available together for the first time, don't miss books one and two in C.C. Hunter's New York Times bestselling Shadowfall series. One night, Kylie Galen finds herself at the wrong party with the wrong people and it changes her life forever. 
Her mother ships her off to Shadow Falls, a camp for troubled teens, but it quickly becomes clear that the kids at Shadow Falls are far from ordinary. They're supernatural, learning to harness their powers, control their magic, and live in the normal world. Kylie's never felt normal, but surely she doesn't belong here with a bunch of paranormal freaks either. Or does she? They insist Kylie is one of them and that she was brought here for a reason, if she can only figure out what it is. As if life weren't complicated enough, enter Derek and Lucas. Derek's a half bay who's determined to be her boyfriend, and Lucas is a smoking hot werewolf with whom Kylie shares a secret past. Derek and Lucas couldn't be more different, but they both have a powerful hold on her heart. As Kylie struggles to make sense of her feelings and her new abilities, the dark side of the supernatural world emerges. An evil enemy lurking in the shadows is about to threaten everything she holds dear and bring her closer to her destiny. And I also picked up the first two books in the Shadow Falls After Dark series. So we have Reborn and Eternal. Uh, Reborn is book one, so I'll tell you about it. This says, Enter Shadow Falls After Dark and meet a vampire named Della who's about to, to discover what her own story is meant to be. Della had the perfect life, the family, a boyfriend, and a bright future until she was turned and abandoned by everyone she loves. She takes refuge at Shadow Falls, a camp for teens with paranormal, paranormal powers. It's where she and her best friend Kylie and Miranda heal their heartbreak with laughter and where Della is training to be a paranormal investigator. And she refuses to be distracted. That means there's no time for romance with Steve, a gorgeous shapeshifter whose kisses melt her heart. When a new vampire named Chase shows up at camp, Della's world is thrown into even more chaos. Arrogant and annoyingly sexy, Chase is a mystery, and the only mystery Della likes is the one she can solve. She can't solve Chase, at least not while she's dealing with ghostly hauntings, vampire gangs, and a web of family secrets. Can she prove herself as an investigator and keep her life and her heart intact? And I think I got all of those from thrift books as well. Okay, next up we have books one and three of another series. This is Let the Sky Fall by Shannon Messenger. And this is book one. And we have book three, which is Let the Wind Rise. And this is part of the Skyfall series. So, let's see. Oh, also while I had this sitting waiting to be uh, hauled for you. Einstein, I don't know if you can see it. Einstein got a hold of this book and chewed up it, uh, the, the top a little bit. Yeah. Though this was a used book, it came from thrift books, so it wasn't like a brand new book which he has done that too as well though he's getting better about not chewing up my books thankfully <laughs> he wants to chew on my bookshelves now instead of the books we're still working on the chewing thing anyway uh let the sky fall it says vane weston should have died in the category 5 tornado that killed his parents instead he woke up in a pile of rubble with no memories of his past except one, a beautiful dark-haired girl standing in the winds. She's swept through his dreams ever since, and he clings to the hope that she's real. Audra is real, but she isn't human. She's a sylph, an air elemental who can walk on the wind, translate its alluring songs, even twist it into a weapon. She's also a guardian, Vane's guardian, and has sworn an oath to protect him at all costs. When a hasty mistake reveals their location to the enemy who murdered both their families, Audra has just days to help Vane unlock his memories. And as the storm winds gather, Audra and Vane start to realize that the greatest danger might not be the warriors coming to destroy them, but the forbidden romance growing between them. Okay, next up we have The Seeker by Isabel Carmody. And this is another two-in-one book. Uh, this has the first two books in the Ober Newton Chronicles. Uh, so we have Ober Newton and the Far Seekers. This says two complete novels, one epic adventure. Ober Newton. 
Ober Newton. In a world struggling back from the brink of apocalypse, life is harsh, and for Elspeth Gordy, it's also dangerous. Elspeth has a secret. She's a misfit, born with mental powers that would mean her death if discovered. When she is exiled to the mountain compound known as Ober Newton, she discovers that someone within its wall seeks the most dangerous secret of all, one that may revive the very forces that nearly destroyed the world. And I won't read about the far seekers because it is the sequel so yeah that's what this one's about okay then we have the wife upstairs by rachel hawkins i think this was like a i forget where i got this one but i want to say this is like a library book yeah like a used library book but it's in great condition anyway this says a vivid reimagining of one of literature's most twisted love triangles Meet Jane. Newly arrived to Birmingham, Alabama, Jane is a broke dog walker in Thornfield Estates, a gated community full of McMansions, shiny SUVs, and bored housewives. The kind of place where no one will notice if Jane lifts the discarded tchotchkes and jewelry off the side tables of her well-heeled clients, where no one will think to ask if Jane is even her real name. Meet Eddie. Recently widowed, he has become Thornfield Estate's most mysterious resident ever since his wife, B, drowned in a boating accident with her best friend, their bodies lost to the deep. Jane can't help but see an opportunity in Eddie. Not only is he rich, brooding, and handsome, but he could also offer her the kind of protection she craves. Yet as the two fall for each other, Jane is haunted by the legend of B, an ambitious beauty and successful entrepreneur with a rags to riches origin story. How can she, plain Jane, ever measure up? And can Jane win Eddie's heart before her past or his catches up with her? With a delicious suspense, incisive wit, and a fresh feminist sensibility, the wife upstairs flips the script on Jane Eyre in a timeless tale of forbidden romance, ill-advised attraction, and a wife who just won't stay buried. Okay, I need something to drink. <sighs> okay, next up we have graphic novel. This is Fables Animal Farm. And this is the second in the Fables series. Uh, Fables is about like fairy tale characters that are living in our world uh, they've got their own little community like the human the ones that can pass as humans they have their own little community in New York called Fable Town and for all of the other creatures from all the fairy tale lands that can't pass as human they've been sent to someplace upstate with like there's nobody around and there's a lot of wilderness and stuff and that's where all of them are. The first one follows um, the people in Fable Town and um, the mysterious and Rose Red's apartment being covered in blood and Rose Red missing, who is like Snow White's sister. This one, all I know about it is it follows the creatures and stuff that are on the uh, non-human place. I can't read everything on the back of here because of there being spoilers uh, for the first one, but I can read part of it. It says, ever since they were driven from their homelands by the adversary, the non-human fables have been living on the farm, a vast property in upstate New York that keeps them hidden from the prying eyes of the mundane world. But now, after hundreds of years of isolation, the farm is seething with revolution fanned by the inflammatory rhetoric of Goldilocks and the Three Little Pigs. And that's really all I can read without spoiling anything for the first one. But I'm really looking forward to reading this. And then another graphic novel that I ordered because I read the first one and really loved it. We have Heavy Vinyl Y2KO. This is the second in the Heavy Vinyl graphic novel series. And it's very cute. It follows this group of like 17 to 24 year olds who work in a record shop, but really 
they have like an undercover girl fight club where they're like vigilantes searching for these missing bands and it's also set like in the late 90s and I freaking loved it and I could not wait to continue and read more by them or more about them okay so these next two books here are actually the same book so I ordered one that was like in very good condition and I got one that was not in like it, it wasn't supposed to be all marked up and things like that and it was and so I was going to return it and like get a different copy and they told me to just keep the copy that I have and they sent me a new one so I have two of the same and um, there was another book that I actually purchased that came at the same time and it looked like it was in okay condition you know the same kind of condition that it said uh, though it did have like withdrawn stickers and stuff on the front but um, I shortly after realized that it was not the same edition that I actually ordered and when I got the sequel to it because I had ordered the first book I ordered the Royal We and when the sequel came I had gotten the sequel in this cute illustrated edition and I remembered that I actually had ordered this other one in the cute illustrated edition as well and they sent me not that one so I'm doing a swap on that currently so I don't have that book here because that one I actually did have to send back but anyway the one that they let me keep the original and sent me a new one was Bill Bryson a short history of nearly everything so this is the new one they sent me and this is the uh, the one that originally came and it's it's a little uh, there's like some water damage and stuff on it but I'm going to I'm just gonna unhaul this extra one but this one I can tell you it says Bill Bryson is one of the world's most beloved and best-selling writers. In a short history of nearly everything, he takes his ultimate journey into the most intriguing and consequential, consequential questions that science seeks to answer. It's a dazzling quest, the intellectual odyssey of a lifetime, as this insatiably curious writer attempts to understand everything that has transpired from the Big Bang to the rise of civilization. Or, as the author puts it, how we went from there being nothing at all to there being something and then how a little of that something turned into us and also what happened in between and since this is in short a tall order to that end bill bryson apprenticed himself to a host of the world's most profound scientific minds living and dead his challenge is to take subjects like geology chemistry paleontology astronomy and particle physics and see if there isn't some way to render them comprehensible to people like himself made bored or scared stiff by science bored stiff of science by school his interest is not simply to discover what we know but to find out how we know it how do we know what it what is in the center of the earth thousands of miles beneath the surface how can we know the extent and the composition of the universe or what a black hole is how can we know where the continents were 600 million years ago? How did anyone ever figure these things out? On his travels through space and time, Bill Bryson encounters a splendid gallery of the most fascinating, eccentric, competitive, and foolish personalities ever to ask a hard question. In their company, he undertakes a sometimes profound, a sometimes funny, and always supremely clear and entertaining adventure in the realms of human knowledge as only his, this superb writer can render. Science has never been more involving and the world we inhabit has never been fuller of wonder and delight. And I thought it sounded super, super interesting. It's also pretty thick. Oh wait, there's a big bibliography in the back. Hold on. There's also a big notes section in the back. Okay, so this big section here is the notes and the bibliography. Uh, the actual book is 478 pages and I've got to start another stack because there's a lot of books <laughs> okay next up is a middle grade book that I ordered this one was actually a new book 
this is one I pre-ordered and it came this month. That is Eva Evergreen, A Semi-Magical Witch by Julie Abe. Now this book has already been out, but this, it was, I pre-ordered the paperback and the paperback just came out. Uh, this says, requirements to pass the novice quest. One, help your town do good all around. Two, live there for one moon, don't leave too soon. Three, fly by broomstick, the easiest trick. Eva Evergreen is determined to earn the rank of Novice Witch before her 13th birthday. If she doesn't, she'll lose her magic forever. For most young witches and wizards, it's a simple test. The only problem? Eva only has a pinch of magic. She summons heads of cabbage instead of flowers and gets a sunburn instead of calling down rain. And to add insult to injury, whenever she overuses her magic, she falls asleep. When she lands on the tranquil coastal town of Atori, the residents expect a powerful witch, not a semi-magical girl. So Eva comes up with a plan, set up a magical repair shop to help Atori and prove she's worthy. She may have more blood than magic in her veins, but her semi-magical fixes repair the lives of the townspeople in ways they never could have imagined. But will Eva's bit of magic be enough even when the biggest magical storm in history threatens the town she's grown to love. And apparently this one also includes an exclusive prequel short story. So very cool. And I actually have the sequel to that uh, in paperback because I have an arc of it. I have an arc of it. Okay, next up we have uh, a book that I ordered immediately after finishing the first one because the first one was five stars and absolutely amazing and I highly recommend it. Uh, but the book I ordered was The Savior's Sister by Jenna Morrissey. This is the sequel to The Savior's Champion and that follows Tobias who is... My battery is already flashing again. Gah. Okay, hold on. Let me go get a new battery and I'll be right back and then we'll talk about this book. Okay, sorry again if the angle changed. I think perhaps that battery might not have been fully charged before I started it because usually they last longer than that. But okay, so the book that I have here is The Savior Sister by Jenna Morrissey. This is the sequel to The Savior's Champion and that book follows Tobias who uh, he used to be a, an artist. He used to be or an artist apprentice and he did that until his father and his sister were in an accident where his father died and his sister was paralyzed from the waist down. And so he quit his apprenticeship to work in the sugar cane fields to barely scrape by enough money to feed his family. And then the Sovereign's Tournament becomes available and this is once the savior has reached the a like she comes of age the sovereign which is her father he puts on this big tournament to choose who is going to marry the savior and like all of the men of age try to like be part of this tournament but only 20 are selected and Tobias has no interest in this because this is a deadly tournament and he knows that anybody that enters this tournament is just a fool because nobody has even seen the savior. Nobody knows what she looks like or knows anything about her. They don't know if she's nice or anything. And uh, he knows that he is the only one that can support his family. So he's not interested, but his friend is and his friend pretty much drags him into it and he ends up doing it because he knows that anybody that's selected actually gets 20,000 I don't know what the monetary thing is there but I'm just gonna say dollars $20,000 which he knows will do a lot to help his family and maybe help his sister get some kind of help where she's maybe not in quite as much pain as she's in so he goes to audition or whatever to be part of this tournament and he is selected. He's one of the 20 
and this tournament is split into two parts so it's like a month-long tournament the first half of the tournament is done in this underground labyrinth with all of these challenges and there's you know magic and stuff involved that things can go awry and the challenges they might need brute strength they might need brains they might need talent you never know and I can tell you that within just a couple of hours of them being in this labyrinth one person's already dead and by the end of the first day four are dead uh, that's not really a spoiler because it happens pretty early on but as it goes on things get harder and harder and harder and you see people's true colors and in the second half of the tournament it's actually out of the labyrinth and into the castle and it was just freaking amazing and I highly recommend it. It was a five star read for me and I cannot wait to read the second one with my husband. Okay, next up we have another book that I pre-ordered and that is Isn't It Bromantic by Liza K. Adams. Uh, the first book in this series is the Bromance Book Club, so I can't really tell you about this one. This is like the fourth book in that series. Uh, I read the Bromance Book Club and absolutely loved it. I think I gave it five stars and I immediately ordered books two and three and then pre-ordered this one. The Bromance Book Club, it follows this big time baseball player who uh, just recently found out his wife has been faking it and he doesn't take that well and their marriage kind of suffers a lot until some of his other teammates and friends introduce him to the Bromance Book Club where they read romance novels. Uh, they, in that particular one, I think they read like a historical romance novel. And they use these to kind of help spice up their relationships. And it was so freaking cute and I absolutely loved it and I highly recommend it. So yeah, that's why I have this one. And then this one follows, each book follows a different guy that's in the Bromance Book Club. So this one follows the Russian. <laughs> okay, the next book that I have here is A Million Worlds With You by Claudia Gray. This is the third book in the Firebird series. And I already have the first two books. So I pulled it up here on Goodreads so I could tell you about the first book, which is A Thousand Pieces of You. This says, Marguerite Kane's physicist parents are known for their groundbreaking achievements. Their most astonishing invention, called the Firebird, Firebird, allows users to jump into multiple universes and promises to revolutionize science forever. But when Marguerite's father is murdered and the killer, her parents' handsome, enigmatic, enigmatic assistant Paul escapes into another dimension before the law can touch him. Marguerite refuses to let the man who destroyed her family go free so she races after Paul through different universes always leaping into another version of herself but she also meets alternate versions of the people she knows including Paul whose life entangles with hers in increasingly familiar ways. Before long, she begins to question Paul's guilt, as well as her own heart, and soon she discovers the truth behind her father's death is far more sinister than she expected. And so I think this one is the final book in that series. Okay, next up we have Crimson Bound by Rosamund Hodge. And this is a, a New York Public Library book. And this says... When Rachel was 15, she was good apprentice to her aunt and in training to protect her village from dark magic. But when Rachel was 15, she was also reckless, straying from the forest path in pursuit of a way to free her world from the threat of eternal darkness. After an illicit meeting goes dreadfully wrong, Rachel is forced to make a terrible choice that binds her to the very evil she had hoped to defeat. Three years later, Rachel has given her life to serving the realm, fighting deadly creatures in an effort to atone. When the king orders her to guard his son, Armand, the man she hates most, Rachel forces Armand to help her hunt for the legendary sword that might save their world. 
Together, they navigate the opulent world of the country elite, where beauty and power reign and no one can be trusted. And as they become unexpected allies, they discover far-reaching conspiracies, hidden magic, and a love that may be their undoing. In a place built on unbelievable wealth and dangerous secrets, can Rachel discover the truth and stop the fall of endless night? Inspired by the classic fairy tale, Little Red Riding Hood, Crimson Bound is an exhilarating tale of darkness, love, and redemption. Very cool. I love a good, like, retelling or inspired by a fairy tale. And speaking of, these next two books are part of a series that I read the first book in the series and gave it five stars and want to read all of the books in the series. So let me pull up the first book. Okay, so the two that I have here, we have The Land of Stories, books four and five. Uh, so book four is Beyond the Kingdoms, and book five is An Author's Odyssey. And the first book in this series is called The Wishing Spell, and it follows Alex and Connor Bailey, uh, for their birthday, they're given this book that, well, allows them to enter into this fairy tale world and they get to meet all of the characters they've grown up knowing the stories about, like Little Red Riding Hood and Snow White and Cinderella and all of them. And well, they don't know right away that this book can do that. Uh, and as they start figuring it out, Connor's afraid that his sister Alex, his twin sister, is going to go into this book by herself. And as he's like storming in, she's just like testing to see if her arm can go in uh, because she's already tested some other things like pencils and books and stuff could go into the book. And so she's just like testing her arm and uh, Connor comes running in and frightens her and she falls into the book. So now he has to jump in and try to save her. And the only way that they can get back is the wishing spell where they can wish for anything and be granted, but they have to go around collecting all of the necessary ingredients or parts or whatever for this spell. And so it takes them all through this fairy tale land and it was a lot of fun. They also get to see these characters as more than just the story and like, maybe what goes on past the story and as real people and I just I loved it so much so I can't wait to have like this whole series and read can read them all okay next up we have another uh continuation to a series we have bitter blue which is the sequel to Graceline and companion to fire by Kristen Kishore and I pulled up Graceline so that I could tell you about it. I've actually read Graceline. I gave it four stars. I really enjoyed it, but I think the synopsis will do a better job of explaining it than I would. This says, Casta has been able to kill a man with her bare hands since she was eight. She's a Graceline, one of the rare people in her land born with an extreme skill. As niece of the king, she should be able to live a life of privilege, but graced as she is with killing, she is forced to work as the king's thug. She never expects to fall in love with beautiful Prince Poe. She never expects to learn the truth behind her grace or the terrible secret that lies hidden far away, a secret that could destroy all seven kingdoms with words alone. With elegant, evocative prose and a cast of unforgettable characters, debut author Kristen Kishore creates a mesmerizing world, a death-defying adventure, and a heart-racing romance that will consume you, hold you captive, and leave you wanting more. And, uh... In my review, I wrote that I really enjoyed it and can't wait to read more. I think if you're a fan of the Throne of Glass series, then you'll enjoy this as well. Okay, and then the last book that I have here is also another sequel in a series. We have Traveler, the sequel to Seeker by, I can't see the name, it's Arwen Elise Dayton. And here's the author's name. Uh, this was a withdrawn library book, um, but I own the first book as well. Let's see. This says, 
So the first book is called The Seeker. I don't know if you can see that. Pulling it up on Goodreads. This says, the night Quinn Kincaid takes her oath, she will become what she has trained to be her entire life. She will become a seeker. This is her legacy, and it is an honor. As a seeker, Quinn will fight beside her two closest companions, Shinobu and John, to protect the weak and the wronged. Together, they will stand for light in a shadowy world, and she will be with the boy she loves, who's also her best friend. But the night Quinn takes her oath, everything changes. Being a seeker is not what she thought. Her family is not what she thought. And the boy she loves is not who she thought. And now it's too late to walk away. And oh my goodness, that was the last book in this ridiculously long haul that has, <laughs> has had several interruptions. So have you guys read any of these books? Did you like them? Did you not? Comment down below and let me know. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, click that subscribe button down below. And until next time, remember to always be completely you. Bye!